I'm getting sick of all large language models. Ouch! Oh, sorry. What is wrong with you? It's not wrong with me, it's with ChatGPT and all these models. They are not stable at all in their output. For example, I'm trying hard to get a structured output out of these models like JSON format. But each time it's keep adding some random stuff to the answer like extra, comma, dot, quotation marks. I'm done, man. There's no way to get a stable output out of these, these models. But you don't need to manually all the time keep changing your prompt. There are some solutions developed that will help you to get a structured output from these large language models. And you don't need to manually parse the output of these models or I, I need to know more about this. And did I really hit your leg? I added these pillows to pretend in the video I am throwing the laptop away and hit the pillow, not your leg. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go. Hello my friends and welcome to this video. Well, you might have already dealt with the challenge of getting unstructured output from large language models like ChatGPT. So getting some text as an output is sometimes not good enough for our LLM application. For example, you want to get a structured output from these models like JSON format that will help you to grab that output of your large language model to call an API or call your other tools. So you need that structured format as an output of these large language models and you might have tried to do so or enforce that structured output by telling that in your prompt which is sometimes not really that stable. So in this video, we're going to check that out, that what are better solutions developed, some of them by OpenAI and some of them wrapped by Langchain to implement that structured output from large language models. Then you can take that output to, again, call your APIs or call other tools in your large language model based applications. Then let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome back everyone and let's start talking about the challenge that we are going to propose a solution for this in this video which is how we can get a structured output from large language models like ChatGPT instead of just always getting text which is unstructured by a native. So there are multiple ways actually to build that challenge and we need to actually find a solution for that challenge because let's say you want to grab an outcome from ChatGPT to call an API. So if you want to call your internal API, you should have the input of that API call something like a JSON and a structure, have a schema. But if you get the output of the large language model as a text, as a sentence, you cannot use that to call an API. Or let's say the output of the large language model, you want to save it in a database. So you need to have that output structured like JSON, like as you can see here, uh, this is actually pasted by Langchain in order to have that data insert, inserted to the, to the database. Or let's say you want to extract a specific part of the output to do some specific queries, for example, to keyword search. But by the end of the day, you have to have your answer in a structured manner like JSON. So now how we can enforce the LLM-based solutions in a way that we always get the output of our, let's say, chat GPT model answer in a structure that we want or in a schema that we want. Well, there are multiple ways. The first way, it's called functions. Some of the large language models can call functions to extract those specific entities that we are getting from the response of large language model. Why some LLMs? Well, mainly and natively OpenAI models, which is a type of large language model, support calling functions. If I click on that, it actually navigates me to OpenAI recently. Not recently, that's a, an, I would call it a recent capability added to OpenAI models that you can now do function calling. What does that mean? I'm going to come to that shortly and we'll see in the code how can I utilize it to enforce the outcome of large language model in a schema I specified in like JSON format. The second way that we do so is output parsing. This is also wrapped by Langchain. 
that means we let large language model generate the output but we, through this parsing and using LLM by itself we can enforce the output in a schema that we have specified to call it a structured answer by large language model the difference between these two is that first functions just some of the large language model support let's say if you go with some go hugging face and grab some open source large language models they don't have maybe that function natively developed by similar to what OpenAI has done and that's one thing the second thing and, and they're by the way more general but they do understand the context so if for example you want to ask something in your structured answer that you haven't provided any specific info it understand that and it will add it to I'll go through the code that will make much more sense it might be a little bit confusing for you and the, the other difference compared to parsing is that parsing will exactly extract what you specify nothing more nothing less conversely functions can also figure out more stuff beyond just what you have specified we're going to come to that again shortly so i have utilized uh, some samples developed by langchains and i executed the codes before i recorded the video to show you both and see how they work in action so let me go to my vs code all right the only thing that you need is just making sure that you have an environment that has python installed you can run it everywhere on cloud it doesn't matter really i just wanted to test the code so i'm running it on my local machine and here's my vs code environment First of all, make sure that you have installed Langchain and OpenAI. Of course, these are the main two things we need for executing this. And definitely, you need to have your OpenAI key also added to the operating system environment that you want to execute these codes. So here, the first option that we talked about was option one, which is we're going to call OpenAI functions, which is also wrapped by Langchain. So what we're going to do here, we are going to actually specify that, hey, this is the schema that I'm expecting the answer of large language model be like this. So if you ship that question, which is for input, here's the input that we have as an example. I am using ChatGPT, which is GPT 3.5. You can use GPT 4 if you have access to. To get the answer or the information out of this context through this schema. I want to get the name of people here, the, the height, the hair color. And I'm saying that I require name and height. And I execute that, and there you go. You see that it captured two people with different height, different hair color, and I got them all added here properly. So I can be even more specific, and by the way, I'm using create extraction chain that on back can use open your functions. I can even get multiple entities out of the same context, again using the first option, which is open your function. So what, what do I mean by multiple entities? For example, instead of just saying, I grab, give me the name, I can add prefix. I'm saying that give me the name of a dog and give me the name of a person. And because I'm saying person and dog, and I told you that OpenAI functions can understand the semantic, so they would do what I'm talking about. And then shipping the same sort of information, and there you go. Now I got this all information back based on the schema I specified. So you do not need to write down a prompt to tell that, hey, GPT model, but before you answer, make sure you answer like this. And sometimes you see that, oh, there is no comma here or there's extra comma. It happened to me a lot. But now with these opening air functions, it's sort of more structured and more reliable, and you don't get in stuck in trial and test process of changing your prompt or keep adding guideline to the prompt which is not always data stable or not guaranteed gonna be stable uh, not only that in case for example let's say for entities that you want to let's say here I I only want to return person attributes or only dog attributes for single queries then we can use that required option we, we talked about that so even in case there are some stuff that you need to grab information out of the context but it's not specified here you can grab them too how in this code example you're saying that i want to have the person name height hair color so on and so forth but any information that you can get regarding dog that we call it extra info i want to grab it as a type of string here in this schema there you go it captured something 
based on the specific information we provided. Like it likes to play with other dogs. This is not a hair color. This is not name. This is extra information that was available in the context, right? So before I go to the second option that we discussed about and to wrap up, what's happening at the back end side when we use these open air functions by LangChain? So I was actually checking LangChain documentation and they said that this is what's happening when you use that create extraction chain, which we just use in the video. And I figured out it is actually using sort of a prompt. It says that extract and save relevant entities mentioned the following passage together with the properties. And now where are those coming from? These are those schema that you are defining. So my schema sort of goes all the way to that, as you can see, and it's shipping back to the backend code and then grab the information for me. So that information extraction, which is specified here, is a function on the backend side. And if I click here, it will navigate me to the LangChain AI implementation. And there you go. That's the function that extract information based on entities that you provide. So now going back to the code, let me open up my VS code. There you go. So the second way that we are going to actually implement that sort of structured output out of large language model, uh, we call it parsing. Now, what's the difference here? Again, as we discussed, it's not using OpenAI function. That means it is going to parse and get exactly what you ask in your schema. That's it. And what LangChain does and use, it is using actually an open source Python library called Pydantic. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Which seems to be Pydantic is a data validation and setting management library. So it will allow us to create a data class with all those entities and attributes that we want to validate them when we initiate an object. So for example, here I'm, I'm defining a uh, Pydantic data class. These are the attributes that I'm going to grab. And then instead of calling create extraction chain, I'm calling create extra chain Pydantic. Now we're in option two. And then we specify that this is the properties or, or attributes of the data class I defined that I grab it from my context that I specify here. So I run this very similar outcome that we got for using OpenAI uh, properties. I apologize, I need to correct myself. I mentioned that this is option two. Actually, it is not. We are still in option one. That means we are still using OpenAI functions, but we are adding this data validation layer on the top of that using Pydantic. But because Pydantic is good enough to be used by itself without OpenAI functions for having a structured output out of large language model answers, then we can use Pydantic by itself. This is now option two. So what we need to do, again, with data class that we define in Pydantic, we can have all these attributes specified. But as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm sort of creating a specific prompt to say to large language model that, hey, I need to answer the question of mine with the given schema that I'm specifying that I have developed that using the class of Pydantic and then I pass it as the prompt template to my large language model. That means not only I can specify the schema with this matter, but also with Pydantic, I can then check the validation of the schema, making sure it is working properly without me manually parsing and figure out what's going on. And there you go. The answer is back for me, very similar to what we have on the top. So if you have, or if you're using OpenAI large language models, then OpenAI functions is something natively developed and I think got introduced by OpenAI just several months ago. It's not really that old. It considered sort of recent. And you have sort of enough flexibility and it have the capability of extracting more information that uh, more entities that you haven't necessarily specified because it understands the semantic. But if you want to use with open source large language models that they do not necessarily have function capabilities like OpenAI models, then something like Pydantic can be helpful to implement and validate it. And it will make the job easier for you if you go through LangChain implementation because it is well integrated with other large language model capabilities. And here was a quick example to just showcase you the art of possibility. If you have been in the pain of not having always a structured schema or a specified framework from the answers of your launch language models and manually parsing or developing cleaning functions for yourself, maybe that's a good moment to pause and think how you can leverage this to save your time and have it more reliable instead of manually parsing the outputs. 
and I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all. How big you would have dreamed if you knew you couldn't fail? Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action. Till next video, take care.